Now, for Mercury, we can also have something that travels and moves and does all kinds of strange and wonderful things, and we placed under it the most massive and enduring of the ancient models. This model was the Pyramid of Giza. What is the largest, vastest, uh, most inconceivable surviving evidence of man's handicraft? It does not belong particularly to recent times, but it still survives. Therefore, it comes under our heading. And the answer, of course, is the wall of China. This wall, she created by men, and incidentally, largely by scholars, because it represented the greatest persecution of learning the world has ever known. But this immense wall, 25 feet high, 50 feet thick and 2,500 miles long. This is without question man's vastest architectural achievement. And every little distance along the wall, great towers rising, gates, and a complex of structure that stretches like ribbon over mountains and into valleys, over cliffs and into depressions boundary and empire, created to keep the enemy out, but like all exclusiveness, serving only to keep the friend locked in. There was no relief, no achievement of this particular uh, wall. It was a complete failure, but one of the greatest achievements in itself of the skill of human life. So vast that most Chinese living along the wall today do not believe that human beings built it. It had to have been built by divine agency. And although it was built and constructed about the time of the Christian era, there is also a note of science in it, because on, over one of the gates is a proclamation stating that it was built under a certain emperor, who, by the way, was the persecutor of learning, and that this emperor had caused a wall to be built around his empire, one-tenth the circumference of the earth, so that at the time it was built, 2,500 miles long, the ancients had the concept that the world uh, was 25,000 miles in diameter, which is not very far from the fact. Now, out of the development of our own time, we have also created wonders. And the question arises in our thinking, what are the wonders which we have fashioned? Now, we have many that we can select from, but let us see whether these in any way can be regarded as paralleling psychologically the implications and inferences of the older concept. What are the great wonders of the modern world, not structure? but wonders that we have perfected, that perhaps having arisen from older sources, we have so largely and greatly transformed that they no longer bear a distinct relationship to the older sources. We have the Colossus of Rhodes, for example, and we cannot make all the parallels, but we will make one or two to show the way my thinking has been on the subject. We have the Colossus of Rhodes, bound to the concept of astronomy, bound to the concept of liberty by the Statue of Liberty. And what do we have out of this? The torch held up. What does it bring to our mind in modern development? Perhaps the, one of the key discoveries or contributions of modern times, the electric light. Here we have the beginning of the development of a modification which was to, was to change the entire life of the race. So the symbol of light finally comes down to us as the principle of physical illumination. The uh, development of certain essential concepts relating to a, a whole variety of extensions, the power of the electric light to transform habits, practices, policies, and to make available to man a life at night, a life apart from the life of earlier man, 
a life which also gives to him illumined leisure, if he wishes to so use it, depending on his own instinct. And from the moon, and from Ephesus, and the ancient symbol of the lunar goddess, imagination, in Magio, we have perhaps another great shadow casting power of modern thinking, the motion picture. For the moon was strangely the symbol of mist and mystery, was strangely the sign of shadows and reflections, a world of things of appearance deriving its light not from itself but from the sovereign sun. So it was a reflector or a secondary source of light and perhaps suggests to us the effect of the motion picture upon the entire life of man. And then, of course, what have we to correspond to the magnitude of things? The magnitude of Zeus, of law, the empire state building, these things that must always be greater and bigger. And perhaps as we look at the thunderbolts in the hand of Zeus, we can be reminded of the development of our atomic and electronic sciences and arts. The rise of a great system which can under loving and intelligent skill, become a wonderful servant of mankind, but certainly one of the stupendous achievements of modern man. Now Saturn, representing the ancient principle of mathematics and the lighthouse that guides the, the Turafal or Eiffel Tower, and the development of a certain concept, a concept of bringing a certain kind of light to man may be paralleled by a department of knowledge which has been always associated by the medieval people with the deity Saturn, and that is the invention of printing. Printing is one of the most powerful forces known to modern man, not available to the ancients. By means of printing, the world of the mind has opened as it could not in any other way be opened. It has produced the diffusion of knowledge. It has made available to the individual the inherited wisdom of his species and his kind. It is a mighty tower rising to carry upon its top the blazing symbol of enlightenment. And the use of the tower depends upon the flame at the top, and the value of printing depends upon the quality of that which is printed. For Mars, representing the mausoleum of Halicarnassus and many other parallel symbols, we can think of another very important field of research that has been open to man, and that is the development and discovery of the X-ray. Here we have a possible means of solving problems, a means as yet hazardous, a means as yet uncertain, but giving us a powerful instrument uh, for the assistance of the human being under many conditions. And of course, X-ray can extend into other fields than that of therapy and becomes important, directly or indirectly, in many phases of our activity. Under Venus comes the possibility of a larger life, a possibility of bringing to the individual uh, the beauties and wonders of the world, so that the whole earth can become a kind of hanging garden, and every man is a tourist. And this is the development and, and advancement of our great systems of transportation. Transportation has now been elevated to the point uh, where by the automobile, the aeroplane, and other devices the world becomes available and accessible to all of us. Transportation has done a great deal to deform but also to beautify the world in which we live. It makes it possible in many cases today for every man to have his garden, to have his own world of flowers and beauty, because he is able to travel further between his business and his home. It makes it possible for him to go out and see his country or see his world. And if they ever get the signboards down, we'll see it better. We now have the whole world thinking about a one-world policy. 
We have selfishness, we have greed, we have intolerance with us still. But these things are passing further and further out of fashion. The individual who exhibits these tendencies is no longer respected as the outstanding citizen. What is respected now is a constructive, hoped-for understanding of mankind. Therefore, it would seem to me that this vision, supported by vast economic structure, actually receiving the major uh, cooperation of many peoples and many levels of integration, that this organized concept of world peace is one of the wonders of the modern world. It is something long overdue, but gradually coming to be done. And by it we are divided from ancient man, who may have had the dream, but had not the ability or the perspective necessary to bring this dream into objective manifestation. We have brought the dream into the world of realities as we know them, material, intellectual realities, and we are fighting to make it work. We are struggling to bring this concept to maturity. Now we had the moon, Diana of Ephesus, music, the Vatican motion pictures. Here is the entire lunar pattern. And what have we today achieved as our great offering to the Lady of the Mysteries? I think the thing we have to offer is something that is paralleling, whether we realize it or not, the labors of world peace. We are merging into a gradual concept, which is now a birthright, the concept of interreligious tolerance, the possibility of religions meeting as such, the gradual emergence of man's instinct to comparative religion, uh, the emerging of the instinct to recognize that other faiths have a right to exist. The moving away from the exclusiveness of a religious position to its increasing inclusiveness, as exemplified by the recent series of articles in Life magazine and many other articles being published constantly, pointing to the possibility of the faiths of men becoming a basis of unity between peoples rather than a constant source of disunities. The ancient world, Pythagoras knew this unity. Others have known it also. But today we see the actual machinery of unity moving into action. And we, uphold, we behold the mystery of man's greater kindliness toward religion. And with each passing year, a greater willingness to explore and examine the building of bridges between faiths and all of these principles have much to do with the hope of our future. And here is another wonder that has emerged from man, part of the archetypal pattern that had to come forth in the course of ages. Now our great deity Zeus, in uh, personifying Jupiter and law, tied up with the great architectural achievements, also tied into the development of atomics, brings us face to face with the great development of the concept of Zeus, namely the concept of administration. And here we have come to another tremendous step, namely constitutional democracy and universal suffrage. These things existed in small, fragmentary areas in the past. But never before have we seen the concept of the rights of man developed and unfolded as in the last 300 years of our world existence. Here we have the concept of government by the people, for the people, and of the people. We have a tremendous group under a certain amount of pressure today, it is true, but still this pressure, even in itself being asserted by other groups in whose actual existence socialized principles are also present.